Well, good morning, everybody. Pastor Kenny here. Uh, I want to welcome you to another edition of The Daily Office. I will have you know that I checked my Comcast uh, this morning, and everything is going fast, as it should. I'm looking at my stream health right here, and it's green. Uh, so, you know, fingers crossed, and I don't want to jinx it, but let's hope today we have a much smoother stream than last time I was with you. Today, I want to talk to you about reentry, a reopening, and more specifically, how we're going to get along with one another in the midst of moving back towards a, a situation where we can get back together in church or really in, in our homes or in society as a whole. Because right now, there, are a diver there, there is a diversity of opinion uh, in our church, beyond our church, about all of this. Uh, for some people, this has been much ado about nothing. And the moment we can get back out into the society is the moment they ditch the mask and, you know, hug everyone they see. And for others, this was a very prudent course of action. And for the foreseeable future, they will live with very much caution. They will be reluctant to leave their house and get together with other people. They'll be wearing masks and hand sanitizing all the time. And, and really, we lie all along that spectrum. Most people are somewhere in the middle. And the question for us is, how are we going to get along with one another in that? How is, uh, how is the person who, uh, the, the, the less cautious person, how are they going to respect and bear with the more cautious person? And how is the more cautious person going to guard their heart from contempt toward the, lo the less cautious person? Today, I want to read from Romans 14. Because in Romans 14, Paul addresses a, a, an analogous situation in the church. The, you have the early church where there are people in the church who, on one side, who he would call the, the stronger brothers, they're the ones who see Christianity as you know, the fulfillment of the old covenant. So that means all the food and dietary laws and all the special days and all of that is sort of out the window. And it's all fulfilled in Christ. There's only one holiday. It's called the Lord's Day. It happens on Sunday and that sort of thing. So they don't have a very tender conscience with respect to eating certain kinds of food or skipping certain kinds of Jewish feasts. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have who Paul would call the weaker brother, the ones who really are still holding on to all that kind of stuff, even though Paul himself would tell them they don't have to. And what he's doing here in Romans 14 is he isn't uh, adjudicating the dispute. He isn't telling the weaker brothers that they're wrong. He isn't telling the stronger brothers that they're right. Instead, he's telling them how to bear with one another in this. So, so much for setup. Let's, let's read it now. I'm going to read Romans 14. This is verses 1 through 12. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, 
and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. It is before his own master that he stands or falls. It is before our own master that we stand or fall. On the stronger side of the spectrum, you have people who believe that faith and obedience and wisdom right now looks like going on about life with some precautions, maybe not as many as others would like, and trusting the Lord to protect them. They're doing this in thanks to God. They're doing this in honor of God. Sure, we have friends that are reckless, and we can talk to, about, to them about their recklessness, but we have other friends who that has nothing to do with recklessness. They believe sincerely and strongly that maybe we're overreacting in some ways. We can disagree with them in that, and we can argue charitably and kindly in that. But from their perspective, they're giving thanks to the Lord, and they're honoring the Lord, and they will answer to Him for what they have done in faith, according to their conscience. And on the weaker side of the spectrum, we have brothers and sisters who they might be in a vulnerable population. They might have reason for concern, and they are acting out of prudence and wisdom according to the guidance of healthcare officials and their, their own healthcare providers. They're doing that in thanks to God for His grace in healthcare, and they're doing that in honor of the Lord, in honor of the bodies that He has given them. They will give an answer to God. And we can argue with them charitably and kindly, and we can tell them they may be overreacting. But the end, at the end of the day, we can trust them to be doing what they think is right. So my prayer for us, specifically in our church, but generally in our culture and the church at large, is that we would be slow to pass judgment on one another. We could disagree about these things, but we don't need to be disagreeable in it. And we can bear with one another. We can be patient we could be humble enough to admit that we don't have all the facts and that we don't view these things from on high. So the stronger brother can bear with the weaker brother as they continue to wear their mask, as they stay six feet away, as they decline invitations over to the home and so on. And the weaker brother can bear with the stronger brother and know that when they go out for a walk with their neighbor, they're not necessarily being reckless or when they push for uh, group meetings and things like that, it's not out of a disregard or a lack of caution or a lack of care for their brothers and sisters. Let's love one another. Let's not impute false motives to one another. Let's trust that we're each doing what we do and deciding what we decide out of thankfulness to God and in an, an earnest desire to honor Him. So I'm gonna pray now. I'm gonna pray now for us in this regard. But as always, I would encourage you, if you have a specific prayer request, please share it in the comments. All right, let's pray. Father, we are yours. That is a wonderful and marvelous thing. Paul asks who we would be to cast judgment on the servant of another. He can ask that because we are your servants. We are your servants as a body in a church. We, also, we are also your servants as individuals to whom, to whom you've entrusted the responsibility to care for ourselves and for those around us. So Lord, first and foremost, I pray you'd give us faith that you are in control, that you are in charge, and no matter what, you have us. You are our protector. Our health and our wellness and our safety ultimately comes from you, not from the caution we exercise or don't exercise, not from our diet, not from our medicine, not from our anything that we do for ourselves, but ultimately from you. Father, we pray you'd also give us wisdom, that you would help us to look at the situation on the ground to listen to leaders and healthcare officials, to people who know better than us. I pray you'd give us humility to admit that there are people who know better than us and that a couple hours of research on the internet doesn't exactly equip us to know 
what would be the best course for us. I pray, Lord, that we would bear with one another. Pray that we would love one another. That we would not grow impatient with one another. That we would make sacrifices in order to see that no one violates their own conscience. In order not to press our brothers and sisters into circumstances that um, they may not be comfortable with. Lord, it's been so easy, in a sense, so far, to have our decisions made for us by the government. But we're getting to a place where we are going to have to make decisions for ourselves as individuals and as churches. I know our church leadership has been talking a lot about this and making plans, and I know every other church is doing the same. I pray for grace and patience all around. I pray that you would help leaders like me to listen first to you, second to the experts you've put out there, and third, of course, to the people in the church to know who needs what and how people are really feeling. Lord, I pray that the coming days would be an opportunity for great unity and for harmony in your church. I pray that strongly held opinions wouldn't divide us. Lord, I pray that we'd be willing to sacrifice our desire to be right in order to live well and love well together. Lord, I pray for my friends this morning on the other side of this screen. The ones who are here, I know for each of them, they're struggling with very real and very different circumstances that would have been there regardless of COVID, but are exacerbated by it now. I think of the people in our church who are um, struggling with a lack of employment and who are struggling to find new jobs in a, an environment where more than 30 million people have lost their jobs. Pray for those in our church who are in that situation in our community, in our state, in our country, in our world. Lord, you provide. So help us to trust you to provide. For my friends who are insecure in your provision right now, may you bolster their faith. May you help them, Lord. Yes, help them to find the jobs they seek, but most importantly, help them to find you. May they rest safely in your arms. Father, I pray for the families in our church. Pray especially for the parents of small children. Two weeks into the, or two months into this, and I know from personal experience that. Keeping little kids around the house is tough. So I pray for my wife specifically and all the other moms and dads that are out there who are uh, struggling to maintain their sanity and to love their kids well in this season. Please give them what they need. And please, Lord, hasten the day when we can take the kids to the library again or the swimming pool or the museum, or any of the other wonderful outlets that we once took for granted. Lord, I pray for those people who are going through this without family, or without people and friends close by. I pray that this time of distancing would not be a time of isolation, that you'd move in them to reach out to others, and you move others to reach out to them. Lord, in all sorts of ways, this situation has the uh, propensity to drive us apart. May that not be true of your church. By the power of your Holy Spirit, would you bind us closer together, even when we disagree? Lord, we know we have peace in you, because you have sent the Prince of Peace to redeem us. 
and you have sent your Holy Spirit to bind us together as a church body. May we lean into that now in these coming days. And may the world see it. May our, uni- and may our unity and our humility and our patience for one another be a countercultural movement that compels people to come and see and to taste that you are good. We lift all these things before your throne in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining me once again. Uh, we'll be back Monday morning at 10 a.m., as, as always. I'd encourage you to uh, check out our website for our liturgy for home worship for this coming Sunday. This Sunday is going to be a little different. Casey and I are going to do a dialogue sermon, and we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to meet together right now and what that's going to look like specifically at our church uh, over the coming weeks and months. So we'll look forward to being with you for that, even as we look forward to the day when we can really be together. God bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend.